This is a bad, bad football team, ladies and gentlemen. The Green Bay Packers losing their Week 8 game versus the Minnesota Vikings 24-10. to Now they're 2-5. and It's their fourth straight loss. There is so much wrong with this football team. Nothing is working on offense. They can't run the football. They can't pass the football. It doesn't seem like there's any identity behind this football team right now. They're making so many mental mistakes. There's just so much wrong with this team. I'm going to give my instant thoughts and reaction to this loss to the Vikings here in Week 8, 24-10, so stay tuned. Before we dive into the breakdown of this horrible game, I want to give a shout-out to today's video sponsor and actually channel sponsor for the rest of the NFL season, BetUS, and they're offering a really cool promo right now you'll get 125 percent sign up bonus with the link down in the description so if you deposit 100 dollars, you actually have 225 dollars to play with on bet us which is available in all 50 states and the one thing i will say is you should probably just bet against the green bay packers at this point and you'll probably win a lot of money but remember to always gamble responsibly like i said clicking the link down in the description will bring you to this page you simply click bet now and you complete three simple steps and that'll get you signed up and be able to bet on a lot of different cool things and 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 different types of props and parlays you can make in the nfl um, i like to put together like a three to four leg parlay now i made one on the green bay packers a couple days ago it, it certainly did not hit but hey it was still fun bet us is known for its reliability security and great customer service as well and they always have awesome ongoing promotions for you to use welcome bonuses and loyalty rewards for new and existing players so Again, if you want to get in on this awesome deal, go click the link down in the description and you'll get a 125% deposit match and just use it to bet against the Green Bay Packers at this point. Again, thank you to BetUS for supporting this channel. All right, so now let's dive into this wonderful Week 8 football game. And I missed last week as I was on vacation and I said, oh, well, this was a great week to miss because that was a horrible performance by this Packers football team. And I don't think it was any better this week. Honestly, it could have been worse considering the Packers lost by two scores here and really had nothing going. So I'm going to start on the offense because the offense has been abysmal this year. They started this game with four straight three and outs. Now, on the second three and out, there was a drop with Aaron Jones. There was a drop with Luke Musgrave, which kind of moves me on to my next point. It's not all on Jordan Love. I know a lot of people want to say, Jordan Love is not the answer. Bench him, put in Sean Clifford. I don't agree with that. I think Jordan Love has been doing the best he can with what he's given. I think there's been a lot of mistakes um, by these wide receivers, by the offensive line, by the running backs. And I'm not saying Jordan Love is mistake free because that is not the case at all. There's many times in today's game during this season that he just misses simple throws. There was a couple simple ones today, a deep ball to Dobbs, a deep ball up the right sideline to Christian Watson. I'm sure there's more that I'm just forgetting off the top of my head. And if Jordan Love would simply just make the easy throws, you know, the Packers might have a couple more wins this season. And he definitely hasn't looked great over the past four to five weeks. Like the first two weeks, we were looking at Jordan Love going, okay, we could see it, right? He's, he's you know, firing the ball on time. He's finding the right read. He's moving linebackers with his eyes. And then, you know, finding that open hole across the middle of the field. And that really hasn't happened recently. But I will say this. This offense, like, no one is making a play for Jordan Love. Like, when Jordan Love throws up a ball, a 50-50 ball to either Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs is kind of like the only guy that's been able to, uh, Christian Watson or any, any other guy, no one has been making a play for Jordan Love. You know, we're down by 14. We're on the goal line pretty much. He throws a wide-open slant to Tay Wicks, who simply drops it. And when I, when I said... Tay Wicks reminds me a lot of Devontae Adams. I didn't mean dropping a wide open slant early in his career that would have resulted in a touchdown. That's not what I meant by saying Tay Wicks reminds me a lot of Devontae Adams. So yes, there's a lot of mistakes Jordan Love uh, makes, but there's also a lot of times where these receivers are not helping him at all. Not to mention receivers running the wrong routes on certain plays. Like if you watch uh, JT O'Sullivan on the QB school, he'll talk about this a lot and how the scheme's really not that awful. It just seems like the execution is just very off. The timing's off. Receivers not knowing where they're supposed to be. The timing of the routes in regards to the play, which I 100% agree with. Jordan Love finished 24 for 41, 229 yards, a touchdown, an interception. He was sacked four times, had a quarterback rating of 72.1 and the interception just brings me back to my last point is 
these players don't make plays for Jordan Love. Like, Jane Reed had an awesome day, but he should have came down with that football and not allow the defender to rip it away from his hands, resulting in an interception and pretty much putting this game away. Moving on to the rushing attack, or lack thereof, for the Green Bay Packers, which seems like it's been a reoccurring statement this entire season. Jordan Love was the leading rusher today for the Packers. Four carries, 34 yards. So Jordan Love's been good in the running game, I will say that, uh, but he shouldn't be your leading rusher at all. Aaron Jones, seven carries for 29 yards. You know, you know, when you go down big early every single game and start with four straight three and outs, no wonder you can't run the football because you're turning yourself into a one-dimensional football team. And then when you're down by two to three scores, you really don't have the time to establish the running game. So no wonder this team is barely running the football. They ran the ball 17 times for 74 yards, a 4.4 average, including an A.J. Dillon, six carries for 11 yards and an abysmal. 1.8 average. They continue to force A.J. Dillon into these short yarded situations, and it's not on him when uh, offensive lineman completely whiffs on Harrison Phillips. I believe it was Josh Myers, um, and Phillips is in the backfield, or the Packers have Luke Musgrave uh, tasked with blocking Harrison Phillips on the goal line. That also makes no sense. So there's a lot of times where it's not on these running backs, where there's already you know penetration in the backfield by the defense. It's like, what do you really expect them to do? So that's also a huge argument point if you've been a frequent viewer of my channel that this Packers run blocking offensive line has been so bad this year. Josh Myers has been bad. I don't know why. I think it was Adam Senevich said Josh Myers, like there's no competition there. Zach Tom won't be put into center because Josh Myers is having his uh, best season as a pro. I, I, I don't know who he's watching. But Josh Myers has been okay in the passing game, but he has probably been one of the worst run-blocking centers in the entire NFL. And that was on showcase today for sure. John Runyon has not been good. Elton Jenkins has not been good, which is very unfortunate because Elton Jenkins was one of our best offensive linemen a couple years ago. And I know he's been plagued with injuries. Of course, the ACL, then the MCL this year. And he's just had a lot of knee issues, so I can't be too, too hard on him. But at the same time, he's one of your veteran offensive linemen. He's one of your better guys. You expect him and you hold him to a higher standard, where you don't really hold Josh Myers to a higher standard. You kind of expect this guy to continue to make mistakes. But the whole interior of the offensive line has not been good. Rasheed Walker has been pretty awful the last few weeks. and actually got benched today. Josh Nyman finally came in and he looked good. Then he injured his foot. So then Rasheed Walker comes back in and instantly gets a false start. This Packers team commits so many penalties. I'm not saying the Vikings didn't win this game because they 100% did, but man, the Packers just simply can't get out of their own way. Early on committing so many penalties, basically making it impossible for them to even get themselves into this football game. They ended the day with 11 total penalties. As for the leading receivers for the Green Bay Packers, Jaden Reed was the leading receiver today. I thought it was a really nice day by Jaden Reed. Four catches, 83 yards. A.J. Dillon was the the second leading receiver. I think last week he was the leading receiver, which that definitely should not be the case. We even saw him out there at wide receiver on that, I think that last fourth down, fourth and long out wide. It's like, what are we doing with A.J. Dillon out at well? Like, if you're going to put a running back out there, make it Aaron Jones, right? Christian Watson, three for 33. Christian Watson has been pretty much invisible. I feel like every time Jordan Love gives this guy a chance, a 50-50 ball, he never comes down with it. At least Romeo Dobbs has been able to do that in certain situations. Tay Wicks, two for 28, also had that Oh, that awful drop there, but the Packers were going to lose anyways at that point. I don't put any of this fault really too much on Tay Wicks. Drops happen, and that one was late in the game when the Packers were already down by two scores. Yes, they were maybe trying to mount a comeback there, and if they score there, maybe they get the ball back and tie the game, but hey, the Packers shouldn't be in that position to start with. Romeo Dobbs finished with four catches, 18 yards, and that touchdown. Again, Romeo Dobbs really been the only consistent receiver on this entire football team. You know, we go into this uh, season in the offseason, myself included, looking at at Christian Watson going, this guy can be a true number one, you know, playmaker type of ability, deep threat ability, super fast, super tall, you know, he can win a 50-50 ball. He has done none of that. Like the Packers haven't been able to throw the ball deep at all. And it also goes back on Jordan Love not being able to accurately hit a deep ball. But Christian Watson hasn't been doing him any favors either. This is the fifth straight game the Packers are without a touchdown in the first half. That is a recipe for disaster. And now on this losing streak, the Packers have a first half deficit of 73 to 9. Again, just a recipe to lose football games, which they've been doing. Now moving over to the defense, uh, the same thing kind of happened in this game where in previous games I felt the same way, where I'm like, 
it's not really on the defense. Now, they didn't do great today. There was a lot of wide open wide receivers, especially KJ Osborne, for the Minnesota Vikings on crucial downs. So I'm not saying the defense is great or anything, or I don't want Joe Barry gone because I do. But when the Packers are losing games like this, it, it 100% falls on the offense. Yeah, this defense, you know, does make stops you know, occasionally and, and gives the offense an opportunity to get back into this game and every time they fall flat. But there's definitely a lot of mistakes on this defense as well. Quay Walker dropping a, an easy interception early in that game. Jair Alexander being a former shell of himself, not even even being able to cover a rookie wide receiver, getting burned on a wheel route and a touchdown. I feel like the fire is not there. The swagger's not there for Jair where, you know, in years past you would see it 100%. I feel like his head's not fully in the game, and that can happen when you're losing games constantly and your, your defense is making some stops and your offense instantly goes three and out and puts you right back on the field while you're already tired. Keyshawn Nixon has been horrible in the slot. I feel like they need to change that up. I know I don't care what they need to do. Just get Keyshawn Nixon off the field. If that means Valentine in and Jair in the slot, that's fine. I feel like I'm better off just seeing the capabilities of those guys at this point. Nixon has not been good in the slot. The Vikings did an excellent job converting on third down today, especially Kirk Cousins. Um, so every time they needed to convert on third down, they did. So the Packers, again, kind of in soft zone certain times uh, where receivers... Uh, you know, crossing behind the linebackers. Kirk Cousins did a good job finding them, and the Packers really didn't get too much pressure on Kirk Cousins until late in that game when they sacked him twice. And also, I want to say, uh, hopefully, Kirk Cousins is okay. Didn't look good. It was definitely looked like a ruptured Achilles with that review, especially, you know, watching so much of the one of Aaron Rodgers. It looks very, very similar. So you never want to see that. So hopefully Kirk Cousins is OK. But he did a good job today, you know, on third down for sure. A crucial downs, 23 of 31, 274 yards, two touchdowns, um, 122.2 rating. But the one thing the Packers defense did excellent today was stop the run. The Minnesota Vikings carried the ball 31 times for 62 yards, a 2.0 average. The Packers' run defense was exceptional today. Alexander Madison, 16 for 31. Cam Akers, 9 for 19. Kirk Cousins, 2 for 9. And I'll say this, TJ Slayton, definitely my player of the day. He gets game ball if the Packers are even giving one out, which they shouldn't. But if I have to announce a player of the day, it's TJ Slayton. I think this was his best game of his career. He played phenomenal today. Some other players that I thought played well on defense, Rudy Ford, who continues to actually be a consistent a uh, good defender on this defense. I thought Quay Walker had an average to above average game. And then also we saw Carl Brooks with a nice blocked field goal. And I also thought Preston Smith did a good job today. Devondre Campbell on his return had 14 total tackles. So I thought he did okay, you know, coming back on his return and probably was a lot of the reason also why uh, the Packers did a lot better in the run game today on defense. But man, there is just so much wrong with this football team. Something's got to change at this point. I don't think it's firing Matt LaFleur or switching quarterbacks. I think there's just got to be a, a change, whether that's Matt LaFleur not calling the plays anymore or something of that sort or something changing, because right now, whatever they're doing simply isn't working. Like the Packers having this awful start on every single first half is killing this football team. There's still a lot of football to be played. We're just a about halfway um, through the season. The trade deadline is this Tuesday. And at this point, the Packers should be sellers. There's a lot of big contracts on this team that the Packers could potentially trade away and maybe get back some draft capital. And at this point, they are in contention for the first overall draft pick, especially with the Panthers winning their first game today. Let me know if you want to see a video on... Um, potential players the Packers could be selling at the trade deadline on Tuesday. But they have the Rams next week, and we'll see the availability of Matthew Stafford, who left that game with his thumb injury. I'm not exactly sure if he returned or not, but nonetheless, the Rams are a much better football team than the Green Bay Packers. Then they have the Steelers, who I think Kenny Pickett also went out with an injury today. So very well, you know, the Packers could be playing two backup quarterbacks the next two weeks and maybe could put together two wins. But at this point, this is not a playoff football team. You know, they have a better chance of having a top three overall pick than making the playoffs at this point. It's just not a good team. I had pretty high hopes for this team going into the season. Uh, I wasn't necessarily calling them a playoff team this offseason. I pretty much said um, I think they'll get around seven to eight wins, which is still uh, possible. Uh, but I didn't think it would be this bad. I felt like they would have at least an identity on offense. Maybe they're a power running team and they run, you know, some nice play action out of, out of that. And Jordan Love makes the throws he needs to do. Or maybe they're a vertical 
actual throwing offense or something. I thought they would have an identity but right now, and they don't. They don't at all. So I'm very interested to see how this next week goes and seeing if there's going to be any different types of answers from Matt LaFleur in his press conference that's probably going on right now, or we're just going to hear the same song and dance of this team needs to play better and it starts with me because I feel like that's constantly the problem. There needs to be a fire lit under this team, and it's just not happening right now. But those are my instant thoughts and reactions to this abysmal loss 24 to 10 week eight Minnesota Vikings versus Green Bay Packers it's not looking good for the green and gold right now um, but hey we got the Rams next week we'll move on to that put this one in the rear view mirror um, and and maybe hopefully start to build a little bit of an identity in this team but that about does it for this one I appreciate you guys watching if you did enjoy please leave a like down below and if you're a new viewer and want more Packers news analysis and updates every single day throughout the entire week go down and click subscribe but I'll catch you all in the next one thanks for watching and as always go pack go